On this episode of Ask Dan, we're going to hit your favorite topics. That includes the new stuff with Surface Hub 2. Where does Andromeda fit into this future collaborative office? And what's the future of Windows 10 on ARM? Is Microsoft and Qualcomm really going to stick with it? I'll tell you. Stay tuned. How will the rumored Andromeda foldable device fit into the new concept of working environment highlighted by the Surface Hub 2? All right, so this is a great question. This week, Microsoft unveiled Surface Hub 2, which wasn't a surprise because they pre-announced they were going to announce Surface Hub 2 a few months ago. But this time, we actually got to see it, and it is breathtaking. I think a lot of people who are even skeptical of Microsoft these days are taking a step back and saying, wow, these guys are really creating some amazing hardware. And the Surface Hub 2 is pretty outstanding. Now, it's not just a giant screen on the wall. It's built around this idea of the office and collaboration. And they made it smaller so it can actually be wheeled around on a cart and mounted on walls. You can actually stack four of them together in portrait mode or two together in horizontal mode. And then they'll operate independently or together. So you basically have a four screen giant Surface Hub, which is really amazing. And the whole idea behind this is this concept that millennials and Generation Z are now entering the workforce, and they are what's called digitally native. I love PR speak, but that's what they say. Microsoft cites a study where 72% of the workforce want to be creative on the job, but only 40% feel that they get the tools to do that. Microsoft's looking to help solve that issue here with Hub 2. So what about Andromeda? The reason this is important is because going back to February, Zach Bowden, our senior reporter at Windows Central, tweeted, Hypothetically, what if Microsoft is building Andromeda, Surface Hub 2, and HoloLens 2 all together as a platform reboot for this idea of a collaborative office? In other words, these are not just random bits of hardware being built by Microsoft, but there's a larger concept here. So if you take a look at Andromeda, it's a foldable device for note taking. You can definitely use it in office. It's gonna be a lot of fun there, but there's also the rumor that it's gonna have a 3D camera on board, possibly that Connect Azure technology we saw announced at Build that will allow 3D scanning of objects to be put in there and then manipulated. You can then, of course, send it to Surface Hub 2, or actually view it in HoloLens 2. So there's an example of how this stuff is all coming together. Microsoft has also showed a lot of stuff, and we'll be talking a little bit more about some changes coming to Office and allows people to build VR and AR experiences. So they're really pushing these ideas out there, and that's what these are. They're tools for the collaborative work environment where people can create on the fly and share across different experiences. Yeah, definitely think of Andromeda not necessarily as like an Office enterprise device, but as something that collaborators, creative people can use in conjunction with Surface Hub 2 and HoloLens 2. Now that doesn't mean that in order to enjoy Andromeda, you have to have those two things. It just means it's gonna work better with those services and it'll give you a bigger picture of what the future of work will look like, at least according to Microsoft. Is Microsoft still working on improving the Win32 emulation on ARM or did they pull down the whole Windows 10 on ARM idea? All right, let's talk about Windows 10 on ARM, one of my favorite subjects, and I have a lot to say on this, so I can do a lot more content on it if you guys want it. This isn't all opinion either. I recently sat down with Qualcomm LS at Build and got to talk to their senior program manager who is overseeing this project with Windows 10. I got to ask all sorts of questions, including the long-term commitment stuff, and I can tell you, Qualcomm is very much seeing this as a long-term category and long-term commitment. For those thinking this is just them dipping their toe in the water to see how it goes and, oh, if it doesn't sell well, we're, we're backing out, that is not the case. In fact, we should be hearing more from Qualcomm about the future of this project coming in June at Computex. I assume Snapdragon 845 support is right around the quarter as well. I should also say we should expect to see new form factors of devices hitting the market. I don't have a time frame on those, but because the chipsets are so small with Snapdragon, they can now create smaller devices like 8-inch tablets and foldable things and who knows what else. I've also heard that some phone companies may be getting involved here. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to get Windows phones back. What I mean is some mobile companies that are familiar with this stuff, I don't know, maybe HTC, I haven't heard that, but they make sense, could make a foldable type device or a small tablet running Windows 10 on ARM. Their challenge is it can't look like a phone. They don't want to confuse customers and they're going to figure out how to make it look PC-ish. But to get more to the point here about Win32, I need to really emphasize this. The emulation system is meant as a fallback. That is, if all else fails, that will kick in. 
Emulation is never as good as native. That's always been understood and that's always gonna be the case. There's just too much going on. In fact, it's kind of crazy that Microsoft was able to get Win32 to run on Windows 10 and ARM in the first place. The OS itself runs exceptionally well. UWP apps also run very well. This is way better than Intel Atom, so don't think that. It's more Intel Core i3 if you want a reference. The question about like, 64-bit apps and all that has been somewhat addressed. At Build, Microsoft did announce an SDK that will allow ARM 64-bit apps. So developers can now recompile all their apps, put them into the store, and run under ARM 64 and get much better performance. In fact, it should make a big difference across the board. However, Microsoft knows this will take many months. As easy as this is, as there's zero code changes apparently needed, they just have to hit a button. They know it'll take a long time. That's why there's the emulation layer. So I'm just here to tell you, this is a long-term project. This stuff is not going away. It will get better over time. Even people complaining that it's kind of slow, which I disagree with if you're running native apps, is going to get better. That's a solvable problem. You just release faster processors, and that's exactly what Qualcomm is doing. So pay attention to this space. We're in this for the long haul. It's a very exciting category, and there's going to be a lot of changes. Wait until June. I think we'll be hearing from more from Qualcomm and Microsoft then. Does the amazingness of the Surface Hub 2 make you more excited for how well done Andromeda could be? All right, in case you missed it, Microsoft announced the Surface Hub 2 this week. Specifically, they gave us a preview of what it's going to look like. It does ship in limited quantities in late 2018 to select partners and goes for general sale in 2019. So this isn't some imaginary device that's going to actually happen. And I think a lot of people were blown away just about how good it is. The original Surface Hub was cool, but that was a carryover project that the Surface team inherited where it just feels more native, like they, they actually thought about how this stuff should work and redesigned it completely. So does it make me feel better about Andromeda and what it could be? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that's the short answer there, yes. Uh, there's still a lot of questions about Andromeda, so I don't wanna get ahead of ourselves here. But when it comes to Surface, I think it's funny. It was only a couple months ago, there was an article in the register and it was saying that Microsoft's getting rid of Surface by 2019. They're backing out of the hardware stuff. And of course, the Windows Phone fans were like, of course he's going to do that. He obviously hates us. And now I think it's funny here in mid-2018, we're juggling just more Surface devices more than ever. In fact, this week, Bloomberg reported that there's a smaller Surface tablet in the works. It's supposed to be more affordable in the $400 range. And those reporters who gave that story are very reliable sources. It's Mark Gurman and Dina Bass. And those are two high profile reporters who I really trust their word on this. Plus our own Zach Bowden heard the same, though he heard it will be a Windows 10 on ARM device. They're hearing it's, hearing it's gonna be an Intel. Which one wins out, I'm not really sure. But there's a lot going on with Surface Team, Microsoft hardware. And I think it's really funny that people a year ago were saying, oh, this is all over and they're gonna wrap it up. And instead we have more stuff to look at. So. Yeah, I think Service Hub 2 should give people a lot of hope that this team is here to stick around and they're still able to wow us. Okay, that does it for this episode. Remember, if you have a question, use hashtag AskDanWindows on Twitter or go to our forums at Windows Central or you can even drop me an email at AskDan at WindowsCentral.com. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to our channel. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Woo!